Now comes a question which is relevant to this experiment, and that is how long does it take for the terminal speed to be reached? Well, the object has a certain mass, so there's a gravitational force on it, and the gravitational force equals mg, and then there is a resistive force, which in the case, because we are operating in regime 1 exclusively, that resistive force equals C1 RV in terms of magnitude, C1 RV, because we deal with regime 1. And so, if I call this the increasing value of y, the second Newton's second law would give me ma equals mg minus c1r times v. And this equals mdvdt. So I have here a differential equation in v. And that can be solved. And you're going to solve it on your assignment number four. What you're going to see is that the speed as a function of time is going to build up to a maximum value, this is the, to a maximum value which is the terminal velocity, or you may want to call it terminal speed, and it's going to build up in some fashion, and then it's going to asymptotically approach the terminal speed. And this is what I'm asking you on your third, on your fourth assignment to calculate that. If there were no drag force at all, I hope you realize that the velocity would increase linearly. So you would get something like this. So there's no drag. So the behavior is extremely different due to the drag. And I calculated already something that is part of your assignment. How long does it take for the quarter inch ball bearing? How long does it take in time to reach a speed which is about 99% of the terminal speed. And I calculated that, and you will go through that calculation for yourself. That is only 9 milliseconds. In other words, once it has broken through the surface, that takes a while because of the thin film, then in 9 milliseconds will I already be at 99% of the terminal speed. And so there was no problem at all when I waited for the object to cross the first mark. It was already clearly going at the terminal speed. So that was fine. 